Nigeria, the PNI will not publish anything. Because if they do, we will come out again. And that is what makes us professional. Because at the end of the day, when we are professional, no political party can accuse you of supporting the other or the other one. So your professionalism is what makes you to be impartial. But on voting day, when we all go to vote as civil society, we vote for somebody, isn't it? Even the chairman of the Federal Commission, he votes for somebody, isn't it? So let's not pray. So there's no neutrality, but there's impartiality. And impartiality is the result of our professionalism. I wanted to make that comment. And to say that, and this is now the, uh, the, 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 the highlight. From the moment the political tensions were rising on 30th December, this was after round two, it was very important that dialogue becomes the mechanism for preventing any further escalation of the violence. And for those of you who recall, I know one airline that better to do, I think the British Airways. By 3 p.m., the banks are closed. And the tension was palpable. And all of us know that history. So how are we ensuring that this year we're even better at doing what we're doing? And so we have the civic forum initiative, and we have the Christian Council Group of Eminent Persons. We are working on these broad-based platforms to ensure that we are engaging early enough in dialogue. And we have tools that help us, and I mentioned one, the tool of the Media Foundation for West Africa. In the case of the 2008 election, I remember when things appeared to be going very far, we called the chairman of the National Peace Council, at that time, Colonel Peter Apia Taxi. But he, as you know, is in Cape Coast. And when he left Cape Coast, he got blocked at the Manam Junction. I still remember somebody in the room who said, but can the Ghana police usher him in with a dispatch uh, uh, ride so that he can be there for the meeting? The first meeting took place in the house of the presiding <coughs> president of the Methodist Church of Ghana. And we did, first of all, an analysis of the political context and immediately engaged. We called, at that time, candidate Professor Atamines, and he said he was in the office and he was ready for us at any point. We called Nana Akufuadu, the candidate of the ruling party at that time, and through Edward, we were able to get a commitment for the meeting at 2 a.m. So the meeting with candidate Professor Atamines was at 12.30. The, the meeting with uh, candidate Nana Akufuadu was around 2 a.m. Then the following morning, we present before around 8.30 a.m. at breakfast. I make this reference to say that we can be very good at what we do. But when the analysis was done, the cardinal took his mobile phone and then he looked around the room. Who can help me to get the president's number? He called the president and the president says, I'll be available at 8.30. In other words, not all of us can call the presidential candidates and the president to a meeting. So my point here is that our role is to support the dialogue, but we need people who actually do the convening. And who are the people with the convening power? The bishops, the imams, the chief imam. And we should not lose sight of that. And if you are very skillful in this, you should constantly remind yourself that you can support dialogue, but there are points that you cannot be able to convene. So out of those three meetings, out of those three meetings, there were commitments and those commitments were then articulated to the people of Ghana in a press conference in the Christian Council. And that immediately lowered the tensions. So you had the Pentecostal and Charismatic Churches, the Catholic Church Conference, the Chief Imam's Office, all the key institutions. Very quickly, both contending parties, those night meetings of the presidential candidates affirmed the mandate of the EC to finalize and release the results of the December 28 elections. In other words, they committed themselves that nobody can comment on how the elections were going to be released. It's only the EC. But in tensions, everybody begins to talk about what they will do. And we must work towards dialogue in insisting that that institution of the state we call the electoral Commission is the only body mandated to manage the elections and they are the only ones to declare the result. The two leaders shared the commitment to transparency, due process, etc. Since the time is not enough, I don't need to read all the points. But then, instead of declaring the results, as you all know, Dr. Farijan declared that we should go to time. So the dialogue then shifted to what we call indirect and shuttle. 
We got both candidates who went to the Brown House Region. And the whole aim and objective was to get them to shake hands and talk on TV. But it was very difficult to do that. So they were met differently. And they were continuously reassured that the people of Ghana will respect them if they will ensure that nothing happens on top of Because one of the commitments was that they will speak directly to all their supporters to pull back and refrain from violence. And at the end of the day, to cut a long story short, we all know that the inauguration of 